This is it. It's the last preview of my upcoming album, Inside Joke. The album is out tomorrow. Today I'm going to show you uh, the final song on the album, which is called Fourth of July. I am frankly exhausted now by the process of previewing these songs, so I'm really excited for this uh, to be done, but we've saved a good one for last. And it may be it's hard to say, I've become really fond of all of these songs as I've worked through them a few times, but I'm really happy with Fourth of July as a song, and I'm much happier with this recorded version of it than I uh, ended up being with the version I recorded in 2021. I had a vision as I recorded singles building up to Fourth of July last year. I had a vision in my head. I was like, I'm going to like use a big muff fuzz pedal, and I'm going to make this like really... like chugging guitar thing that was like somewhere in between the modern rock radio like creed sort of sounds that i listened to a lot when i was a teenager and then like the smashing pumpkins -y kind of sounds that i've listened to more as an adult and um in the end i i don't think i recorded that in a way that was like dynamic enough to really make that work i like forgot the the basic tenet of using that kind of style um and then uh it so happened that right around the time that I recorded it, I did, uh, just as an experiment, I was like, how would I play this acoustically if I was at an open mic night? And um, started practicing what I thought of as like a Goo Goo Dolls version of the song uh, that was slower and just acoustic-y. And I ended up far preferring that. So the, the final version that you're going to hear in just a minute is like that, uh, that more acoustic-y style. But I think it still has some power. In fact, I think it has even more power um, from being a little bit slower, um, and more intentional, maybe more dynamic, certainly. <clears throat> um, the, and the last thing I want to say is that, um, I feel compelled to, uh, to dive into one particular line in the song <clears throat> that some of you, uh, may remember, but it's the kind of thing that like will pass by you in the song. And it, you may only have a vague memory of this, or maybe this is just a weird thing that went around, um, the greater Houston area, uh, when I was a, a preteen a young teenager when i was in middle school there was this trend it's one of these like go to your friends into doing something self-abusive trends you know like the cinnamon challenge right but um the trend was that it, you know in the lunch room everybody would crowd around a table and just like peer pressure somebody until they took a packet of salt and poured it in the middle of their hand and then put an ice cube in the center of their of that salt and squeezed it and it was like how long can you squeeze it you know and uh, it started to hurt pretty quickly. Um, and most people then would like act rational, like they have a real survival instinct. They would just let go. Other people would hold on for longer and would like kind of burn their hands. That was the joke. <clears throat> uh, well, as I was thinking about images to use in describing uh, the act of remaining focused, almost like, fixating yourself on something that bothers you, uh, I landed on the idea of uh, holding salt and ice. Um, and that's why that's the first line in the chorus. You know, it goes, not tonight, but tonight it's salt and ice on my lips. That little bit. Okay. Um, that's all I've got to say about this. I, I love this song. I love this album. If you've liked what you've heard, Go check it out in full uh, tomorrow, September 2nd. But until then, this is the Play School tape player that started all this nonsense decades ago. Decades? Not quite decades. A decade and a half ago. Um, but here's the song. I hope that you enjoy it. It's the end of the last song. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna forgive you and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna forgive
As always.